a couple weeks back on House Calls Vermont, we were talking about how you properly air seal um, an outlet or a light switch receptacle that could be on the exterior wall. In the market today, and it has been for quite some time, there are these foam gaskets that you can put underneath the switch plate, which would be right here, or the basically the, the, uh, the plate that covers the electrical outlet. Um, unfortunately, those don't work. I mean, it makes you think that it's working um, because you're doing something, but it really isn't air sealing the way you're, you're looking uh, for it to be done. And so with that, we wanted to show you basically how to do this appropriately. Now keep in mind, these are live outlets. So you definitely want to isolate the circuit breaker um, for an area where you're working and know that you're going to turn that off. Otherwise, it could be a problem, especially some of the things we're going to show you. So one big disclaimer, we're not advocating that you do this. We're just showing you how we would do it if we were doing, going to do this professionally uh, beyond the, the simple gasket that, once again, doesn't work. So here we go. You can take a regular screwdriver and first remove the screws in the switch plate. Making sure you put those in a safe place because losing materials while you're doing work becomes very frustrating on the other side when you're trying to put everything back together. Now the plate should pop right off and there you have the electrical um, switch itself. Now, granted there are several types of outlets out there. Um, some of these have multiple switches. Some of them have multiple electrical uh, uh, plug receptacles. And so um, each of these would be air sealed pretty much the same way. Now with that, there are different generations of these actual boxes, these electrical boxes. And some of them, like what I have right here, is a more of a new construction box. And, and those will be more of a blue color. Um, it's a blue plastic. And that's what you're gonna see in um, most new construction houses today. With that being said, there's other ones that are metal um, and also made of different materials that will um, prove to be a little more challenging, let's put it that way. So when I'm doing this, I'm taking this out and here's, here comes the tricky part. This is why we don't recommend that everybody does this. Because when you're pulling this out, let's say your electrician didn't do a great job and you pull this out, you may be exposing things to, um, let's put it this way, loosening wires or the wire nuts inside here, the wire nuts. You may be loosening those connections. So when you put it all back together, you've got a switch that doesn't work. You have a plug that doesn't work or something maybe a little bit more challenging. And so with that, I would say, um, just be sure you have some good wiring in there. We have done it in the past where um, on a professional level where we did really great work air sealing, but then the customer calls up and said, hey, I, my light doesn't work anymore. We go back and we find that one of the connections had loosened um, while we were, we were doing the work. So that's why you need to be really careful. But in that, I'm gonna pull these wires out and I'm gonna show you why in just a second that we're doing this. Because in the back of the outlet, so here we are once again, and the outlet is opened up. And what I was trying to demonstrate is the fact that in the back of each of these type of boxes where the wires come through, um, you're going to have some type of variety of knockouts, as they're called, or some kind of pass through for the wiring. And as you can see right here with the green dot, right there is one of them. We have another wire coming in over here and another knockout over there. But also down below, you have twin type knockouts. So for everyone that's up here, you've got another one down below. So all those are gonna be what we want to foam and that's what I'm going to show you next. So as you can see with the foam gun, the foam gun itself is metallic. Um, it does have a, a metal wand on it. Um, one thing to do an extra set of protection um, just to ensure the belt and suspenders safety is to make sure that uh, you maybe tape the outside of this with electrical tape. That way it will not be conductive. We still say go ahead and turn off all the receptacles though, the power to the receptacles so there's not a, a possible hazard. But what I'm going to do next is, I hope the light's not too bright, but I'm going to go ahead and in that knockout, you see that void back in there? Just exactly where I'm going. I'm going to go ahead and put some spray foam. Not a lot, you don't wanna go crazy with this. You know, because if you do, the whole box becomes foam. You know, the effectiveness of this procedure 
um, is about 80, 85%. I've seen better, but it, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna go so much further in making sure that you're, you're stopping the airflow in the outlet, which then, once the air is flowing through the outlet, it's also flowing through the wall system and causing the insulation to um, lose its effectiveness because air is passing through it and thus the ability to um, keep the warm air, air molecules lofted and, and in place diminishes greatly. So I know the shadows are playing a little bit on us. I'm sorry for that. But once again, what I wanna be able to show you is how we're going to um, do the lower part of the box as well. Can you hold that right there, my lovely assistant? Okay. So in the lower part of the box, you will see that we have some of the same knockouts back in the back. So I'm gonna get a little of that dust out of there. <sighs> and try to clean it out a little bit with this. Okay, but what we have is that same knockout in the back over there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spot foam that. It is better to have all this dust out of there um, to make the foam stick better. But for our purposes right now, for demonstration, this will be very effective. Now I did instruct a customer one time who was very handy on how to do this and told him to do a very limited job on the foaming. And when I came back, the entire box was filled solid and sticking out of the wall. That's not what we're saying to do here. But as you can see right now, you spot foamed the knockouts below and you spot foamed the outlets above. And thus you now have an effective assembly in that part. But there is another step here. That other step is going to be dealing around the perimeter of the box, which we have to make sure we move the wire side to side once again. But right now, as the foam is setting up, we have the ability to go ahead and caulk. You can let that go. Okay, so with that, I normally push the wires to one side or the other. And this sheet rocker, when they did this work, they did a very, very good job of sealing around, or cut when they cut, I should say, around the perimeter. They made very tight cuts. In the past, even when I tried to do some of my own sheet rock when I was newer to the business, I found that I had some of the same issues that you had a big void around these areas. And that's a place where air will really move through. And so that's why it's good to use a high performance caulking, not a caulking that's labeled painter's caulking, but something that is definitely high performance, which is really important. And so what you're going to do is get something that's gonna be a long lasting caulk because once you uh, seal this up, you don't wanna to have to go back unless you're gonna change the light uh, configuration, light switch configuration or electrical configuration. Paper towel, please. You definitely want to make sure you have all your items in place, and I will be demonstrating that um, as far as the materials. Now, once again, you do see you do see around in these areas here there is some uh, sheetrock dust. You want to definitely make sure you get that as clean as possible. But once again, for demonstration purposes, it, this will definitely do for us. But I'm going to start in one of these videos. We have to show you how to caulk appropriately because you never want to be pushing towards um, or away from where you're caulking. You always want to be drawing back from where you started. And the reason why is it just gives a better bead and it uh, keeps it from being so darn messy. So right now we're seeing that we got to stop. Cut. So I'm back and what we found was that the caulking would not adhere well. So as I was doing this without movie magic or anything else, I thought it would be best to go ahead and take some time and make sure that the area around the actual uh, electrical box was um, clean, dry, and serviceable uh, so that it would actually receive the caulking better um, and stick the way it needs to. So now we're ready to go. So once again, I'm going to be putting the tip that, of the caulking right here Putting a nice bead. Now, since this was done so nicely by the uh, sheetrock person, um, there's not a lot. It's not sticking.
It's clean though, right? Yeah. It's just that this is the drywall. Okay, starting again. Take 15. Anyway, um, we did take time to go ahead uh, to clean the substrate or the surface of the electrical box so that the caulking would adhere appropriately. Now, the caulking will not adhere well to the sheetrock itself where it's exposed, which is right along here um, at first until you actually smooth it in because that can have a little bit more dust. But this is the process that you use. And remember, you're always pulling away from where you started. You don't want to push towards where you want to go. Now it's not going to be a perfect bead to start with, but when you come in here, you're just going to go ahead and smooth it in without making too much of a mess. You don't want to smooth forever because what will happen is when you put the electrical plate back on, it's not going to look great. You'll see the caulking. But right now that's giving us a really nice seal and granted, your results will be a little bit different depending on how much room your um, box has around the actual sheetrock. So, and if you need to go back and touch up a little bit, oh, that was terrible. Another blooper. So we are once again just smoothing this in and your re results will vary depending on what size box you have, but you can definitely get a really nice seal there. E even though, you're, you know, with my case, the box was not really, um, there wasn't a big gap in between the box and the sheetrock. So many of these others there are. So what I'm going to do next is also caulk around this area here. Just Just lay a nice bead. So what I'm going to do is lay a nice bead along this side. And granted, I have a dripless caulking gun um, to an extent, but you've got to still activate the button in the back to get it to stop dripping. <laughs> um, there are others that do not have to do that. But once you get to the end, push the button and stop. And this will give you a nice bead to then blend into the side of the sheetrock between the, the actual box and the um, sheetrock itself. And granted, it may not be the prettiest, but it will also be something that's unseen. You want it to be functional. That's the biggest thing. And you can see along this edge, there is a really good seal now um, between the sheetrock and the box. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the third side of the box. And once again, I need to move the wiring out of the way so we can get to it. Once again, I'm doing this with one hand, just in case. You can do it with two though, if you shut everything off. And you'll see once again, that this is a really nice um, junction. They probably used a rotor zip on this to go ahead and get a really nice junction between the box and the sheetrock, but still that's not air sealed. So we're just gonna put a nice bead once again. So we're just gonna put a nice bead once again. Pulling away from where you started, not pushing towards. Now granted, I'm putting this on the surface of the box first, and you say, well, how could that possibly air seal anything if it's just on the plastic? Because then we bridge the gap by feathering in the caulking to the edge of the sheetrock to make that seal. And this is not the same type of caulking method that you would use on a nice surface around your trim because there's a whole different methodology with that. What you're trying to achieve is an air seal. Okay, so that little cleanup may be necessary. There we go. That's in there nicely. Okay, and then the last piece we have to do is right up here around the top edge, which we can do right now. Come up. Once again, the caulking is going to stick well to the box at first until you have the chance to stop the caulking gun, come back, and then feather it in. 
along that, that edge. Now, should you have a larger gap in between this, the box and the actual sheetrock, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you uh, fill that appropriately. Now, that's when the gap is no more than a quarter inch, okay? Because what can happen is, um, if it's more than a quarter inch, the caulking will be sealed today, but when it dries, it'll open up again. So you don't want your good work being turned into a failure or, or doesn't get you the results that you're looking for. Um, so what you wanna do in that case, you might need to put what's called backer rod around the actual perimeter because sometimes you'll see these really fat um, electrical uh, plate covers or receptacle covers because you did have some errors in the sheetrock. And so if that's the case, take those off still and then bridge that gap with a material called backer rod, which is a foam material. Um, and then you can even use the spray foam like we were using in the back for those, those, those areas uh, for the knockouts. Um, but then you have to wait for to let it set and then maybe cut off some excess. So I think the back rod is easier because you tuck it in between. Your local hardware sells this right on the weather stripping sh uh, weatherization shelf where you have weather stripping and other items. And then you just tuck that into those bigger gaps and then caulk along that. And then the caulking will stay adhered and it will not separate. So right now I'm gonna um, take a step back and then we're going to uh, put the outlet back together. So now after air sealing and taking a little more time to feather the edges, um, sometimes just a little bit of a material, a little bit of water or whatever, you can feather that to make it look a little bit better and seal better. Not really how it looks, because once again, it's gonna be behind the scenes and covered up, but you want it to be functional. Um, the things I'm thinking about here as I'm putting this back together is, this is a pretty clean outlet. You know, the electrician did a really good job of wiring this very efficient um, in the sense of uh, the methodology they used. And so it's gonna go back together really nicely. Some of these outlets though, there's a lot of conductors, you know, especially when you get a fourplex or even a sixplex uh, with all these switches and um, receptacles in there. And so getting all that back together could be really challenging and, and somewhat dangerous. That's why sometimes a professional is better at this. Or you may choose not to go ahead and foam the knockouts in the back. Um, instead, just do the perimeter around here as we just did. And uh, I'm just putting on another set of gloves. But you may just choose to do the perimeter, uh, like I said, around the sheetrock in the box and to get a good air seal, but still those knockouts are important. Um, even the ones that aren't used, remember, because there's a little gap around that entire thing um, that can be uh, leaky. Now in the future, if you should want to go ahead and put uh, more conductors through there for like a remodel job in that same box, the foam comes right out and then just touch it up again. But in this case, we've also found that some of these wires are so short um, that uh, um, you're taking these things out and to take it out this far, you wouldn't even have room for that. So each case is gonna be specific. So you just wanna be really careful no matter what. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these back in, hopefully not obscuring your view. Now for some, it might be best if you go ahead and uh, let some of this dry first before you start going back with these. That's just a re recommendation. Let me go ahead and take our screwdriver and marry it back up with the actual receiver. Make sure it's in the uh, tightening mode. You can use uh, uh, you know power tools for this too. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes once again. I like to get the top started or the bottom and then go to the other one. But one of the reasons why you might like let it uh, stay out and dry first before you go to the next one is that uh, you might want to let your material set up before you put it back in. But I have two thoughts on that because if you put it, start putting it back in before the foam is set up, then you're not going to disturb the foam once it's in. So I kind of like to put it back together as soon as I'm done, because the foam takes several minutes to uh, set up in this case, uh, you know, because it's a single part foam. So it gives you some, a little bit of working time. But then I would do this and then go to the next outlet after that. But what I was saying before is I like to start either the top or the bottom first, and then do the next one, but not tighten them all the way until I get them in there and know that both of them are started. Just a good rule of thumb. And then you just keep tightening this up. And that was not a blinking because it's that I just touched the switch and it happens to be the same switch that's per, or the same light that's providing this illumination right now. Okay, 
Okay, the switch seems to be in there. And you could, if you wanted to, go ahead and turn the power back on, and then you can just test, hey, does the light switch work? And as you can see, right now it does. Um, what's happened before is people get it all buttoned back up, they do a bunch of outlets, then they, and they cover it all back up, everything's great, they turn things back on and find out they did have an area where something, a connection got loosened or something like that. So um, I just say be careful. Make sure you're testing before you cover everything back up and so you don't have to take everything back apart again. Just go ahead and put these screws back in. Once again, I don't tighten it up all the way until I get the next one started and know that it's good. And then I can finish this one, go right back to the top. Come around here. So I'm putting these screws right back where they need to be. Something that, that you may not know is that some people just leave their screws like this. And most electricians that I found leave it like upwards. One reason is because dust does not collect as readily, but you would not have a nice even pattern there. But right now, switch works and your outlet is now sealed or your electrical box is now sealed, whether it's a light switch or whether it is an electrical receptacle. But thank you uh, for listening and I hope this has uh, proven to be very helpful. Bye for now.